Welcome to the Grazer Linux Tage. Benedikt Malerbach is a PhD student in formal methods at TU Graz, and his research revolves around the question: How can one make, uh, or how can one make, how can one make sure that this program works as it is supposed to do? And his talk will be will be about property-based testing. So please, Benedikt, the stage is yours. <laughs> Okay, thank you. So, as you just said, I'm uh, I'm working on uh, formal methods. So this means we're investigating how can we check uh, that a program uh, does what it is supposed to do. And uh, today, I don't want to talk about research, but about uh, how you can uh, use the the simplest uh, forms of these uh, techniques into your uh, and bring them into your own programs. And for that, we'll talk about uh, property-based testing. So this is a random testing approach that allows you to enhance your unit tests. And this is uh, one of the techniques that is the easiest to integrate. So I hope this will be uh, useful for the software engineers among you. So let's first uh, investigate or uh, look, what do you actually mean when we say a software is correct? So there are many uh, different ways how we can uh, define that. So the first um, bit tautological way would be it does what we want it to do. But this is uh, really hard to teach the computer. So if even if you write your unit tests by hand, uh, this isn't really something uh, you can write as a unit test. You have to. Uh, write down examples. And so you have to think, what does it mean? OK, if I send this data, then I want to have this output. So you come up with this input-output pairs and write down these. Other uh, things that you could think of is, no matter what I do to my program, it should never crash. Or we could also think about, maybe there are we are more mathematically inclined, and we think about some properties that our software should obey. So if you're uh, writing a complicated data structure library, then we want to preserve certain invariants. So for a, a search tree, for example, we want that all these uh, branches obey this uh, data structure invariant. The left branch with the smaller elements really only has smaller elements. And the right branch with the large elements only has the large elements. Otherwise, our subsequent algorithms would break down. So these are ways that we can tell the computer what it means for the software to be correct. Or another thing would be if we are uh, serializing a configuration or exporting something from our program, and then at a later point, read our own file format. We want to reconstruct the state of our program again. So these are a few of the uh, ways how we can express uh, some correctness properties. We will never be able to fully describe our intuition of a program, but this, these are things that bring us uh, forward and go a bit beyond uh, writing uh, down simple examples. And this is... Uh, in research, we call this also the oracle problem. How do we define and uh, get a, an oracle that tells us if our software is correct or not? And now, once we have written this uh, more formal or more computer-readable version of our uh, specification, we want to check it. So for the example pairs, I mentioned before, this is relatively straightforward. We write uh, unit tests, we build this, uh, we send these inputs to the program and check the outputs, or we execute a certain sequence of uh, interactions of method calls, and then uh, check if the result is as we want it to be. But for this uh, properties or other things, we could also just come up with uh, some input data or some input interactions. But why do we have to do this ourselves? We could also just ask the computer, hey, I have now this uh, 
property that if I save my file and then read it back, I want it uh, to have the same configuration back again. Why not just randomly generate uh, configurations in our program, write them to the uh, disk, and then read back this configuration file? And this is exactly what property-based testing does. Yeah, so this is uh, generating random input data for these properties. Other uh, ways that are more uh, research and not a topic of these tasks are exhaustively exploring all the states of our program, or we could even write uh, mathematical proofs either by hand or computer assisted. But for this talk, I want to focus on this automatic testing via randomness. So this means we need to get the inputs. And as I already uh, spoiled from the previous slide, we will use randomness. But there are also other ways uh, we can uh, get inputs. So if you write just the examples, then we could pick anything that comes to our mind. That uh, works somewhat, but is maybe not the best idea. More smarter is to uh, think about the corner cases of our program. So if we have a program that takes a list, then maybe try to not uh, to give it an empty list. Or if it, we have numbers somewhere in our program, we can try the maximal and the minimal number. So these are uh, corner cases or just uh, common uh, use cases. And because it's sometimes difficult to think of all these corner cases, uh, we will use a combination of random data and uh, examples and unit tests. So this uh, technique I want to present you today is not really a complete replacement of unit testing or of even of manually testing uh, some parts of your program, but instead you should think of it as one a small additional thing you can do to help your program uh, behave correctly. And the tool I want to present to you is, is uh, Hypothesis, which is a library uh, for Python. And this helps you to write uh, these properties on the one hand, and also uh, provides you a framework of how to generate random data for your program inputs. And uh, it's inspired by the Quick Check library, which was originally uh, invented in Haskell. So this comes from the functional programming uh, community, but as you see, it's for uh, Python, it exists, it exists as well. And I think the Python library is even one of the uh, best engineered property based testing library. So it provides the most uh, comfort features uh, for users. Let's uh, look at uh, this example here from the documentation of Hypothesis, which David McIver uh, wrote. And so this is uh, a program, and we now want to uh, test this. So the, what this program is supposed to do is a, a run length encoding. So we want to uh, compress or uh, a file by looking at uh, consecutive characters. and storing the character and how often it is repeated in our uh, result string. So if we have a string that is uh, five A's followed by uh, seven B's, then instead of writing A five times and B seven times, we instead can store that you will have the character A and then uh, five and then character B and uh, seven. And of course, if you have this uh, encode function, we also want to uh, decompress or uh, decode our uh, program again. Uh, this is um, this one. So this uh, looks at uh, this uh, list of uh, character and number pairs we produced in the previous encoding program and decodes this. So it takes the pair and repeats the character again. Or by these counts to produce uh, a result list. So let's first write some unit tests. So this is probably what you're used to already. Or I guess uh, many of you have uh, used uh, unit testing libraries of some sort.
Now I came up with this example. And this is not completely trivial. It's probably not a corner case. It's just testing the, uh, one of the most common paths in our program. So if we take uh, this string and encode it, then by like executing it in my head, I came up that this should be the, the result I want to see. So I, now I have a unit test for encode. I probably should also write uh, tests for the corner cases. But for the sake of the argument, uh, let's not do that and see if our uh, property-based testing tool will be able to come up with them. And I also have to write a, a test for decode. So if we have to uh, decode something, why not just take this uh, same output we already mentioned in our previous unit test and say, OK, if I decode this string, I want to get back this. And if you uh, look closely at this, then we have exactly, if you have, we have this uh, element here or this uh, string here. And again, we mention it here. And uh, these two are also the same. So this would give us a nice uh, property. If we encode uh, the string, then we get uh, some value. If we decode this value, we get back the initial string. And this shouldn't only hold for this one example we have written down here. But instead, this should have hold for every imaginable string we can plug in here. So let's uh, use hypothesis to generalize this, these two, to combine and generalize these two unit tests. And I call this property uh, decode inverts encode. So this is uh, one of the uh, simplest properties uh, will come up with, and it's also one of the most uh, common ones. So this is also similar to the or storing your configuration on a hard drive and uh, reading back this file. This is uh, one of these, we can call these round trip properties. So now we have this, we say, okay, we, let's look at what uh, syntax and everything we have here. So we, of course, we need some imports. And so the library is called hypothesis and we can import this uh, given decorator. This will be used to uh, tell it how to generate random data. And then we also need uh, a strategy. And the strategy is the actual component that uh, generates these uh, random values. So in this case, uh, Hypothesis already provides us a, uh, a strategy called text, which helps us to generate random unit codes, uh, test inputs. And how do we use this now? So we have a test uh, method. that is um, also has the, the test prefix of PyTest. So this is, you can directly integrate this into your uh, PyTest environment. Just write this and it will be executed as one of your uh, tests. And it has a parameter. And so this uh, parameter S uh, is, uh, is a string. And now we want to say essentially whatever this string is, uh, this assertion should hold. So encoding the string and decoding it again should give us back the same string. And now we need to use this decorator. So we say, OK, there is one parameter here. And you can generate random values for this uh, parameter using uh, this text function or this text strategy. If you have multiple parameters in our test, then we can just give it a, a parameter list to this given decorator. Say, OK, the first uh, object is text, the second one is a list of integers. The third one is uh, one of our configuration objects and, and so on. So let's uh, run our test, um, test framework and see what happens. 
So what happened here is it says, oh, it found a falsifying example. So it found some S, namely the empty string. So would have been a good idea to write this corner case test ourselves. And with this uh, empty string, we got an exception. So our, if you look here, we have this uh, character variable. And if the input string is empty, then this uh, for loop here uh, gets skipped and character is never assigned a value. But down here, when we uh, create the entry to be added to our list, we reference it. So it never got a value, but we try to use it here. So this is obviously bad. So we should in some way handle uh, the empty list, like by uh, checking it at the beginning and returning the empty list. And how did uh, our test framework actually find that? So what is it uh, really doing here? So this uh, strategies, don't generate a completely arbitrarily random data, but they try to think a bit about the corner cases. So the, the one who has written this text combinator probably also thought about testing empty um, uh, strings or uh, strings with just normal characters, strings with other things. But in general, it's uh, random. It just has a few, has a little bit of guidance on what are interesting properties or how to get a good a good spread over over the domain of uh, of strings and then the the tool uses this uh, random generator and asks it to provide 100 test inputs at least that's the default parameter and with that it uh, runs uh, this unit test code here and uh, checks our assertion. So you can also write longer uh, tests, not just these uh, one-liners. Okay, so this was a, a, a small and relatively simple one that may be easy to spot or which is an, also an obvious corner case. So we want to our program to always test this. So this is a bit more like a example based unit test. And we can also tell our property based tester to always test this one example. So always test the empty string. This is can we, we can do with this example decorator. So this, if you found a bug in our program, we can uh, preserve this knowledge in our test cases. So uh, it, we also have a, uh, a cache inside of Hypothesis that is uh, storing these previously failed examples, but this is only intended uh, for a local uh, user or developer. So you're not, it's not guaranteed that if you take this database and transfer it over to another developer's computer, that this will still work. And it's also nothing uh, you can read as, as a documentation as it's common for agile and test-driven development, where you say, okay, the, our test case, should also be a documentation of our code. And if you use this uh, example decorators, then we can also uh, preserve a bit of this uh, documentation aspect. And okay, these are corner cases uh, that might lead to regressions, but that might also be interesting uh, for the user to, to think about. On the other hand, maybe we found a bug and we know, no, nobody should ever uh, call that. And I don't want to handle uh, this problem in this uh, method. Maybe this is a local method and you're not supposed to pass a null configuration in there or because this should be handled at some upper level. And we don't want every uh, method call to 
duplicate all these checks. Then we can also say, okay, exclude uh, these things. So assume that this that string here is not the empty string. So if you, this says, if you pass in the empty string, then this property must uh, is not required to hold. It can hold, it cannot hold, we just don't care. And what this does, it, it helps to somewhat guide this random uh, generator. So they implemented quite a smart adaptive random generation in Hypothesis where you could, for example, write an assume that says only generate me or my test is only relevant for positive numbers. Then if you randomly sample uh, integers, you would expect to get equal number of positive and negative numbers. But Hypothesis will somewhat adapt uh, its random generator. And if it realizes that you're rejecting all these negative numbers, then it will uh, generate fewer and fewer random number, uh, negative random numbers and more and more positive numbers. So you get most of your tests will then actually test uh, things that match this assume um, statements. But it's it's not the best way to do this. So you can, as I will mention a bit later, you can also give parameters to uh, strategies and or write your own strategies. So this is a bit better than just throwing away and hoping this uh, adaptive step works. Because in the end, we want to have enough tests uh, data that actually executes our code. Because if we want generate 100 random test cases and our tool already rejects half of them or rejects 90% of them, then we don't get uh, as much knowledge about our program as we want to have. Let's look at a different, uh, more uh, complex error in our program. So we have the, uh, the same encode. Uh, program, but and now we have this uh, special casing of our empty string, but somehow we made a different uh, mistake. We forgot to reset uh, this counter. So this is we we go through the character, then we count how often how many uh, of the previous characters already had the same number, and. Uh, this is this part, and uh, once we get a different uh, character, we produce one new entry in our program. But if we forget this uh, reset, so we got a different character, but we continue so we have A, A, B, for example. We say, okay, we have one A, two A's, and now we should again, if you have a B, we should have, okay, th this is the first B. But now with this line missing, it would say, okay, this is actually the third B, which is wrong, obviously. Let's see if our testing tool can, can find this mistake. We have the same uh, test code as before. We didn't write any new uh, examples or anything. We just uh, tried to use random data. And we get uh, this uh, input sequence. So uh, we have zero, zero, and one. So it found a, a relatively small input that has only three uh, characters, but it is still able uh, to find uh, our problem. So we have uh, two characters, so this makes the counter unequal to one. And then we get a different character, and this now has a non-matching uh, counter value. And this is, should actually be a bit surprising. Why does it, if it just uses random data, why does it find this a uh, small and using relatively obvious characters, so zero and one, they are also quite related. Why doesn't it generate something like 500A or 20As, uh, 7Ds, a few non-printable characters, and 
there's something completely random. Why instead this uh, super uh, small and neat test case? And this is the concept of a shrinking and or test case a minimization that is used by a property-based testing tool. So once the random tests have found a problem in your program, it then tries to subsequently uh, test it with uh, similar inputs to uh, get the smallest and simplest uh, test input. And uh, these tests, uh, these simple test inputs must still um, trigger the bug. So the, the bug must still exist, but we want a simple output. And with these uh, strategies, they include not only the random uh, generation, but also this uh, shrinking behavior. And this first allowed the, the test to shrink it down to a free character string where the first two are the same and one and the third character is different. And it afterwards also tries to minimize or to simplify the actual characters. And it then uh, dance toward um, zero and one because for some reason it thinks that these are uh, the simplest characters. Maybe it, it could also uh, give you A, A, and B. In my view, this will also equally would be equally simple. But these are so it's not using like uh, seven and eight because it thinks these are more complicated numbers or more complicated characters or not nothing unprintable or so. So it's or like it could have space space new line as our input string, which would be a bit of a pain to debug. Even through it's still printable. Okay, so we now uh, went for a very uh, short worldwide tour for how to write a test for a very simple program. And you might ask yourself, okay, if you have this decode encode, okay, this is a property. It's quite obvious and. Also, uh, yeah, we have this uh, text generator already provided. But what if my program is a lot more complicated than uh, this function? So I would have to come up with uh, properties. I don't know yet how to do that. And I also need to generate uh, inputs for my own uh, data that are significantly more complex than just a string. And that will give you a few hints on how we can uh, do that and what uh, mechanisms Hypothesis provides you and to assist you to write properties and also uh, to write these uh, random generators and shrinking uh, strategies. So let's first start with uh, strategies. So these, whatever a uh, strategy you have you can use it in the uh, given decorator to generate inputs for a parameter. And you always generate inputs of uh, some uh, type, but type is in this case uh, relatively general. So the type could also be any uh, dictionary or a string, an integer, a boolean. So, so yeah, but it always has a certain uh, shape. Might be a bit less confusing than just type. And it ha has a way to minimize these test cases. So it has a bit of uh, knowledge on what a simple test case is and how to obtain them. And one of the most uh, interesting and uh, useful things is we can combine these strategies. So let's look at the, some examples. And what do I, I mean by uh, combining uh, strategies? So Booleans are relatively simple. And now, 
let's look. So this just generates randomly true and false. But integers, they are a bit more interesting. So, and this is also a strategy uh, that allows you to parameterize it. So as I said, mentioned earlier, maybe we want only positive numbers, or we want numbers only of a certain range. And we can already tell this to our strategy when we uh, mention it. So this integer strategy will only generate integers between 0 and 100. Or the text strategy can be parameterized by uh, the printable argument. So we are only interested in uh, printable strings and not strings containing uh, control characters. Or there are also some uh, more complex uh, strategies already available inside Hypothesis. For example, the emails uh, strategy or generator uh, generates random RFC compliant emails or email addresses, which probably can uh, find quite a few bugs in some applications if you uh, try this out. Or you can, for dictionaries, you tell it what is the value for keys and for the actual um, value fields. And we can also say um, this uh, or operator. So we want to have a list, and each element is independently chosen either as an integer, a string, or a Boolean. So we can use this uh, pipe or this or to build uh, these junctions of these strategies. And what's so this is a way to uh, combine them. And the really smart uh, thing this library does, it, all, uh, it automatically now finds you or builds you a generator and a shrinker for these uh, more complex types. So for this uh, list, which you mentioned three different uh, other generators and also has this or operators, it still is able to find uh, generators to uh, produce random data and also a shrinker that gives you uh, simpler outputs of this uh, complicated shape or a bit more complicated shape. Um, you might be able to write uh, generators or strategies for your own uh, types this way. But most of the time you need a bit more. And for this, um, Hypothesis provides you with the composite uh, decorator or the composite oh. ability. So with this, you can write your random generators or and it, it then gives you a shrinker automatically. But you write this in a very uh, freeform way. So you, you have this uh, draw function. And you provide, can uh, say, OK, there are, we want to draw so elements is, a, is an integer generator. And draw is a function that takes a, a strategy like integers or lists. And it tells it, OK, I want some uh, value for XS. And then I can mention XS at some later point and uh, draw random values depending on uh, the previous random value I generated. And we can also use uh, loops and ifs. And so we can really write freeform code here. So and what this does is it generates a random list of uh, this element strategy, which is if you don't provide one, it's integers, but the user can provide any uh, strategy for the elements. And we want our list uh, to have at least one element. And then we want to have, a, additionally to this list, we want to have an index into this list. And it should not be just any random number, but it should be a random number between 0 and the maximum index of the list. So we now have this uh, random list, and we can ask, how long is this random list? OK, and now generate me something between 0 and the length of this 
random uh, list and give me a random uh, index into this list and then uh, produce this a pair of lists and index into the same list as a as a random result of this uh, strategy and with uh, this composite you will be able to write strategies even for a like a complicated configuration object and now that we have our uh, strategy for uh, some of our internal data structures or objects in our uh, program, we need to uh, write properties. So this is a part that is a bit more like complicated and requires uh, creativity. So I will just mention a few uh, general strategies that will be applicable to a wide range of programs. So one is uh, you can generalize uh, unit tests. So if you have a, a program that just like insert some data somewhere and then uh, does something and checks if this data is displayed somewhere, then you often write some uh, dummy data in your unit tests. And the first uh, step you can try is instead of using this uh, dummy data, uh, just uh, use random data instead. So use this, uh, use a parameterized test case and say, okay, generate me something random here. Or we can do uh, fuzzing. And this is a term for also sometimes called monkey testing. You just send random input data and see if there is an uncalled exception in your program. So there we don't really have to think about our properties. You just have the strategy and see, okay, is there any uncalled exception in my program that I want, that I don't want to have? So could a malicious user break my program? Or these uh, round trip properties, like I said, if you write your configuration and read it back, or if you export the current state of your program, like the image you're editing and then reading it back, these are also uh, relatively simple. Or you might actually have an um, older implementation or simpler implementation of your program, and you want your new re-implementation to behave exactly the same. Like you write a new fancy parallel uh, version of your program. Then you can say, okay, whatever random data I use, I want it to behave the same as my old reference implementation. Even though it's now a lot faster and uses uh, multiple cores. Okay, and now, yeah, we, we still have two minutes. So there is uh, something. So we just talked about input and output pairs as of now. But you will probably say, okay, no, my programs are not these uh, simple functions. They are stateful programs and like, okay, we do some one thing and then do another thing. So how does this help me here? And we, in Hypothesis, have the ability to do uh, stateful testing. So we want to generate a random sequence of interactions in the general thing of our programs, like methods calls on, a, on an object, and then I uh, can check if, this, uh, if there is a random interaction that makes our program crash, or we could then also write a uh, invariance like uh, this should always be the case for this object and whatever methods i call this should not uh, be violated and how do we uh, define a generator for these interactions for this hypothesis has a very neat um, state machine uh, dsl so let's assume we want to test uh, a heap class so we can insert elements and get out elements and it should always um, pull out the smallest element we have previously inserted. And for this, uh, we use uh, these rule-based state machines. So we have uh, rules and say, okay, we can have a rule uh, push, choose any random integer and uh, call the push function. When we have a pop function, that is only be allowed to call if uh, our heap is not empty. Uh, then we 
extract, use the pop function to extract one element and check that it is actually the minimal element of our heap. And our random tester will now choose a sequence of uh, pushes and pops to find uh, problems. So one uh, problem that could occur if there is a mistake in the pop function that it's not uh, re-sorting or rebalancing the tree, then you can actually get a test output that is really a sequence of uh, method calls. Like try to insert three elements and then uh, call pop twice and use these values and this will give you a bug. And this allows us to also use this for larger uh, programs. So there is a commercial Erlang version of property-based testing and they found in uh, real applications uh, bugs that require like more than 10 or 20 steps to, to reproduce a problem. Okay, so that's it for my talk. I would like to invite you to try this in your own uh, project. And yeah, so this was about a talk about Hypothesis, which is a Python library for property-based testing. You can also try it in many other uh, programming languages. And I would recommend to maybe just start with uh, fussing your program. Generate random data and see if it crashes. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, you, Benedict, for your talk. And there was one question in the IRC for now. And the question was, um, can the random number generator for those tests be seeded to ensure test suit determination? That's a, a very good uh, question. So, honestly, I'm not... Uh, completely sure. I think you could uh, use the, the provide a seed somewhere, but that's not uh, really the intended uh, use of this uh, framework. So it's better to just uh, generate random uh, data whenever you you run the the program or run your tester. So I think what uh, whoever asked the question wants the, this uh, determinism for the test suit is to all if to like uh, detect uh, regressions or so. Like uh, we already had uh, something that failed or something that's very interesting, and we want to ensure that this is uh, always tested. And uh, this is actually what the example uh, decorator is intended for. So this is, uh, we don't uh, make the testing completely deterministic, but we say, okay, there are a few uh, important inputs we always want to try. And we provide these as, uh, as examples. But the, the remaining uh, not as interesting inputs in my opinion, it's not that useful to say, okay, we want this uh, completely random garbled string to be always the same. This would a bit uh, defeat uh, the random uh, testing. But I think you could, somewhere in the library, you probably could provide a, a seed as well. I hope this answered the question. Are there? Any other questions from the chat? Um, thank you for your answer. There are currently no other questions from the chat. Um, I would say we wait 30 seconds or so. And if there's no other question, then the people who want to talk about can join our Jitsi, uh, which link I will post later. And otherwise we would end the stream. Okay, so um, let's wait a bit.
there are no further questions on the IRC. So I will post the link to the cheats and I say thank you for your talk, Benedict, and goodbye. Okay, goodbye and thank you everyone for listening and see you in the uh, Jitsi. Bye.